Hello everybody, it's Wendy, and today we are doing another piece in our broken jewelry, uh, sea, broken seashell jewelry um, tutorials, and we're going to work with this broken piece of a scallop. But first, our encouraging word for today is by Winston Churchill, success is not final, failure is not fatal, it's the courage to continue that counts. That's so true. Okay, so we have this beautiful little scallop, and as you can see, it's broken. Poor little thing. <laughs> I love scallops. I am a scallop collector. Here is my scallop collection. Let me see if I can tip this up and show you. Don't mind the mess on my desk. Look at that. That's my scallop collection, and they are so, so beautiful. Look at them. They come in so many different colors, and just, oh, I love each one, and some of them are broken. I don't care. I pick them up anyway, so this guy right here, he's been worn. Poor little thing. I pick him up anyway. I don't care if they're broken. They're so beautiful, and I love them. I just really love them, so there they are. The orange one down on the bottom, isn't he pretty? So <clears throat> I picked up over 200 scallops the other day on the beach and this was one of them and it is broken, but we're gonna use it anyway. Look how pretty. This is a gorgeous little calico scallop and I'm gonna show you how to make this usable even though it's broken, okay? So here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need some E6000 glue. There it is. You are going to need some clear fingernail polish or some Krylon spray, clear spray. You're going to need your shell, and I have bags of seashells for sale on my website. Um, not, they don't have too many scallops in them because I'm a scallop hoarder, as you can see, but they do have um, a lot of other really cool shells in there that you could use to do this exact same thing, okay? Um, I have two large bead caps, and those are actually Jesse James bead caps. And we're going to be using them to mend the hole in this scallop. I have two clamshell connectors. I have a, um, these are five millimeter clamshell connectors. I have a bunch of small, these are size two crimp beads. And one Swarovski crystal. This is a pointed back 19SS in silk. Or light. No, this is light silk. This is light silk. Okay, very pretty. I have a lobster and a jump ring for it to clasp onto. And then I have an assortment of jump rings here that we may need. Whoops, and we may not. I have the length, <clears throat> excuse me, of Coriana chain here. And I have cut this into, I like my necklaces like this to be short. I don't want them long. I want to be able to see it. And this is actually about... 19 inches long. Okay, so that's my Coriana. And then I have some a selection here of pearls in three, di three different colors that I felt like looked pretty with this um, shell. We're going to do a floating bead kind of thing. Um, I have my jewelry tools, my cutters. I really think that's everything that you're going to need. Okay, so get your stuff together if you want to make this beautiful little necklace and come on back and we will get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, I've already painted him one time with the clear nail polish, one coat. I'm going to put another coat on him. You can use Krylon spray. All this does is strengthen the shell, okay? This makes it much, much stronger than it is without it. And I know some people don't like the shiny uh, they would rather have the matte shell, and I get that, but you need to do this because it's going to make your shell way, way stronger, okay? And you need it to be strengthened a little bit because it's got a hole in it. I'm going to do the back. I'm only going to do one coat on the back, but I've done two on the front. But just, you know, this really does give it some stability and some strength. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to paint him up. And then I'm just going to set him down on a little baggie here till he dries, okay? Now, um, two coats on the front, one on the back. That's what I did. Now, I have these Jesse James bead caps, and all I've done is flatten them just a bit. So this one, what I did is I just have pulled its legs out. I'm going to do this one the same way. Just kind of pull these little legs out like this. We're just flattening it a tiny bit because 
we're going to glue one on the inside and one on the outside of the shell. And we want it to kind of have the round uh, shape, but not be, you know, round too rounded up, okay? And that's what we're going to do with that. So I'm going to go ahead and blow him a minute. I think he's fairly dry. Good enough to work with anyway. Okay. So I'm going to take my bead cap and I'm going to do, I'll go ahead and do the outside one first. So I just am going to set it down there and this one needs to be a little flatter. Let's try this. Yeah. So that's pretty good right there. Can you see how it covers the hole, but it lays against the shell on the edges? So it's, you know, it's not um, totally flat, but not totally bent. And I'm going to flatten it out just a little bit more, in fact. Okay. So you basically are just trying to make it contour with your shell. So you can bend a leg in if you need to. You can bend a leg out if you need to, but we want it to contour with our shell. Now, we're going to take our large jump ring. So this is a large, thin, actually that's a split ring. I don't need a split ring. Let me find a large, thin jump ring. My jump rings are all mixed together, and I know that would drive a lot of people crazy, but it doesn't bother me one bit. <laughs> I just dump them out and find what I need. <laughs> okay, there one is, a large, thin jump ring. And what we're going to do with this jump ring, I don't want to drill a hole in this scallop because he's very fragile already. Um, scallops are thinner shells, at least these calico scallops are, and he's got a hole in him. So we don't want to do anything really to stress and make him any weaker than he already is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bead cap and right here... As you can see, there's a hole through the scallop right there. I'm going to put the bead cap right over that. And then I'm going to put the jump ring through both the bead cap and the hole in the scallop. And I'm just going to close it up here, just like this. Okay, see that? Now, I've got to do the same thing with this scallop, or this uh, bead cap on the other side. Now, it is more... Um, curved because it's on the inside of the scallop and the only reason that I'm putting it in there well number one to just cover up that hole so if anybody did see you know the back of it it wouldn't be ugly but number two um, it's going to give it some stability as well just like the front so we're going to put that on close that up okay so now we have our two little or our two little uh, bead caps in here what we're going to do is glue them down so I've got my E6000 here <clears throat> a toothpick and I'm going to start with the one on the inside and I'm just going to squeeze out a little glue here on my I like to squeeze this out on my little baggie I don't know if it'll come out or have I got has it dried in the end it's kind of dried in there I think let me get it flowing again come on E6000 it flowing just a minute ago I did the other um, did another seashell tutorial just a minute ago but it's kind of clogged up in there right now so I'm just gonna get it flowing again I'm gonna squeeze some out here onto my little baggie and then I'm gonna stick the lid back on here really fast because he does flow out if you're not careful okay I'm gonna take my e6000 and get that dried piece out of there don't want that I'm just going to spread it around here, around the hole on the inside, just like this. You can be pretty generous with it. The more you put, the more secure your little shell is going to become. And then I'm going to take that little bead cap and just lay it in there in all the glue. Now, don't worry about being really neat with the glue. It does not matter at this point. What matters is that you get a lot in there and that your bead cap gets glued down really well. I'm going to get some more out. Don't tell me you've clogged up already. Usually it flows out like a waterfall and I can't get it to stop and it makes a big mess. But it's being a little difficult today. Oh my goodness. Stick that in there. Clean it out. There we go. Okay. 
So again, I really do want to get quite a bit of glue around the bead cap inside here. I'm trying to get the top of it. And again, it's going to dry clear, so it doesn't really matter if it shows on this part on the inside. I don't think I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now over here, we want to do the same thing. We want to glue it down. But we want to be a tad bit neater about it on this side. So I'm just going to go on the inside of the whole bead cap here. In fact, let me just lay this on the... <laughs> There's got to be an easier way here. Let me lay this on the... Get those clogs of glue out of the way. I'm just going to lay it on here. And I'm just going to liberally put glue on this bead cap. All around it. And you know what I did not do that I needed to do? I did not. I needed to make this bead cap hole bigger. Okay, well, we'll do that here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to do it right now. I do need to make the hole in the bead cap a little bit bigger so it will accommodate my um, crystal. And if I could find my beading all, which I had last night for my Jesse James video, where what did I do with it? It's gone. Yeah, my desk is a bit of a mess. I'll just use my drill. Okay, so I'm going to take this drill. You could use a beading awl if you had one. That's what I was going to use, but can't find mine. And I'm going to go through this hole in the middle. This is just my hand drill. I need the hole to be a little bit bigger so it will accommodate my crystal. I think that might do it. Let's see if I have a bigger. Is this a little bit? Yeah, this one's a little bit bigger. Whoops. And I'm just making the hole in the middle of the bead cap just bigger because my crystal is a 19 SS and this hole is tiny and I want it to I want it to lay down in there and I'm sorry if you guys can hear Chris on the phone he is so so loud <laughs> I try I go close the door I come back it's open again I just we've had discussions about it but he just is loud okay so we're just going to make sure that that bead cap has a chance to dry and I'm actually going to add a little bit more glue to him because I um, picked it up a couple of times and I want to make sure that it glues down really well. This is going to add stability to your shell. It's going to cover up the hole and hopefully keep it from cracking and make it usable. Okay. We just put it on there, push it down. We want it to glue on really well. I'm going to put the lid on my glue. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and stick my crystal on. While we've got the glue out and everything's going here, let's just go ahead. I'm going to take this, just put it over the hole there, put the lid back on the glue. I'm just going to take my little 19SS crystal and stick it right there in that hole. So that's why I had to make the hole a little bit bigger. He's just, he's a pointed back. If you had a flat back, it would probably fit better, but I really like this color. So I'm going to use the pointed back. Now we are going to let this dry. I'm going to let this dry for a good 45 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll finish it. But I want to make sure that it dries and that when I pick it up to finish, you know, uh, the necklace, I'm not going to have things falling apart because the glue is not set up good enough. With E6000, it takes about 24 hours to completely cure, but you can manipulate it and uh, work with it in about, I don't know, I'd give it 30 minutes, something like that. So let's let it dry and we'll come back here in a minute and we'll finish our necklace. Okay, so I think we're dry enough now to be able to work with this a little bit. And I am going to turn it over. And I am going to take a little E6000. Put it right here in the middle. And I'm going to glue a pearl in there. Just in case it would flip over. You know, it'd be pretty on the inside. Why not, right? So we're just going to glue a pearl right there. Okay, now... Um, we're going to create a floating bead necklace with this. So I am going to take my chain, put it right here through my jump ring. I loved this chain. I thought it was so pretty. The color of this gold, 
I wanted it to show, is my point <laughs> that I'm trying to make. I just thought it was so pretty. I didn't want to cover the whole chain up with beads, but, um, so we're going to do a floating pearl kind of thing going on. You want to find the middle with your piece there. And then I am going to, let's look here and see what we've got. We've got these little white ones. These really pretty kind of a antique gold and then these that are kind of a maroon shade. So I think what I'm going to do, and we need our crimp beads as well. Um, let's see here. What do I want to do? Make sure I've got that together and it's in the middle. Okay, and it is. So that's kind of important. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to eyeball this. You can measure if you want, but I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to put a crimp bead on each chain. So one there, one there. I'm going to let them fall. And then I'm going to make sure that I have my chain in the middle. I've got glue all over my fingers right now. And then on each side of this pendant piece, I'm going to come out maybe that far, not real far on each side, just a little bit. And I'm going to crimp the bead down. Okay, and all that's going to do is make it stay in, in place when we put our bead on. Okay, so there they are, they're crimped. And really, the, you could use crimp covers if you wanted to, but honestly, I don't think these crimp beads show up that bad. Um, once you get your beads on, they're really not that noticeable. So I'm going to put on one of these antique gold colored ones on this side and one on this side okay so there's what we've got with our little pendant hanging in the middle now I am going to put on do I want to do I want to do a couple pearls here let's see I think let me put one of these white ones on and see what it would look like and I did check these beads beforehand, and they would go on this chain. But I may need to trim this little piece into a point. Let me see if that helps. Sometimes you need to trim it into a point if it's kind of blunt on the end. They'll go on better if it's trimmed into a point. Maybe I didn't check these. I thought I did. Okay, maybe I didn't. So I may have to grab some white ones with a bigger hole. These little four millimeters may not work on this. Huh, they don't seem to want to, and I honestly did think I checked them. Hold on, let me go see if I have some other white pearls that might work. Okay, so I decided that I do want something white on here, but I thought it might be nice to add a little sparkle. So I have these kind of milky white or opal, white opal sort of rondelles. So I think I'm going to use those in place of the white pearls. So again, I've got glue all over my fingers. I'm just putting these on just like this. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put a crimp bead on each side. And crimp it, just crimp this closed so they don't roll around on the chain. So in doing this with the crimp beads, we're just creating what looks like floating beads on the chain. Okay, so just drop your crimp beads down. Now, um, just kind of let gravity do the work. Hold it up here and just crimp it you don't have to do it they don't have to be super tight but you don't really want them you know moving either but just uh hold them up let gravity make them fall down and then crimp it okay so we're going to put another crimp bead on either chain 
on both chains on either side is what I was trying to say. These are so tiny, it's hard to manipulate them. And now I can hear the cat screeching. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going to come up about... I don't know, what is that, a half an inch maybe? On either side and crimp. And when I say crimp, I'm not crimping with my regular crimping pliers. I'm just flattening these with chain nose pliers because they're not really meant to put two wires in a place. They're just meant to hold these beads on this chain in the place. So they don't have to be crimped like you would normally crimp. So don't. By that, I'm just flattening them with the chain nose pliers. Okay, we're gonna let those two beads, I'm gonna do the maroon pearls next. Let them fall. And let's see, do I wanna put anything else on with this one or do I just wanna leave this one like it is? Maybe I'll go ahead and do this one. I kinda like doing a little strand or a little um, string of things together instead of just one bead all the time. And then I may even just go ahead and do these guys. So little sparkly rondelles. Yeah, that's cute. We'll do that. Okay, gonna add on another crimp on either side. And just crimp it, flatten it out there on your chain. Just like that. Looking really pretty. Okay. Going to add a couple more crimp beads. One on either side. Now these, let's see how far I wanna come up. I think I'm just gonna just come up a little tiny bit from the one I just did. I don't want them to be even on this chain all over. I'm kinda trying to make them a little bit, um, I want them to be even side by side, like together, like this, but I don't want like the spaces that the chain is showing to be the same all throughout. I want it to be different. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and put another of these gold pearls, these antique gold ones. Let it drop down. And then we're gonna put another crimp bead on either side. Okay. I'm just gonna do the single pearl there. And if I can get the crimp bead on, I've got my fingers covered in glue, which is a problem. <laughs> and these tiny little beads. <laughs> so just put your crimp bead on, let it fall. There we go. And go ahead and just crimp it right down. Right on top of the bead. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put on another crimp bead. On either chain both chains, either side, both sides. <laughs> I'm not saying that right, I don't think. Come on now, go on there. Don't be so difficult for me today. That one doesn't want to go. 
That one will. Okay. Same on the other side. Okay. So on this one, I'm going to come up a little further. About right there on both sides. And again, I just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exact. I don't feel like it does. If you want it to be exact, then by all means. But I just kind of eyeball it. Okay. Now I'm going to do a white. A white rondelle. I really like that kind of milky white rondelle with this. I think it's pretty. Another one on this side. And then a couple of these kind of coppery brownish maroon sort of ones. Just one on each side. Whoops. Okay, just like that. Then a crimp bead on either side. Okay, crimp bead on that side bead on this side now of course you don't have to do yours just like I'm doing mine you can you know use your own creative control however you want to do it this is just a guideline um, I cannot get that crimp bead on there everybody you know designs differently and sees things differently and I think it's really interesting when you watch I love when people take they do these challenges where they have two jewelry designers give them the same exact products and see what they design. I think that's so fun because it's really neat to see how everybody looks at things differently. Um, you know, I don't see it the way somebody else is going to see it. And that I think is really cool. So we're doing a current bead on each chain. So by all means, do it however you want to do it. And if you want to email me pictures, I love to see pictures of the things that people make from um, my tutorials. And if I don't respond right away, please know that I do, I will respond. Um, I just, it's hard for me sometimes to get to all the emails. <laughs> but I will, absolutely, eventually. It may take me a while, but I will do it, I promise. I will answer you. <laughs> so... Okay, now, let's see. What do I want to do now? I think I want to do another one of these. Yeah, I like that. Um, and do I want to do the white yet or no? Do I want to do another maroon? Let me try the maroon and see. Um, a lot of times I just have to try it on there and see how it looks. Yeah, I kind of like that. I think we're going to do that. Okay, crimp bead on either side. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I keep losing it. There we go. Crimp bead on this one. Crimp it down. Now I'm going to do a single white one on here. So crimp bead on either side again. And I am going to go all the way up the chain. Um, a lot of times with the Coriana chain, I don't necessarily use all of it. I'll just bead at the bottom and leave, because it's so pretty. Um, you can leave it showing, but with this floating design where I've got the chain showing in between, um, 
certain beads and then the beads floating, I think I'm just going to um, bead all the way up to the top. So I'm just coming up a little bit from the golden maroon beads. And I'm going to put one of the white rondelles. Just going to do it by itself, I think. Do another crimp bead. And then I'm going to do another crimp bead. Come on there. There we go. It is a little fiddly to get on there, these little crimp beads, but... I like to use the smallest ones that I can fit on the chain because I don't want them to be real prominent. You want them to kind of just be hidden within the design. Okay, so I'm going to come up now, probably about here. And I'm not, I mean, there's no really rhyme or reason for why I'm deciding where to put them. I'm just trying to make it look good, you know. <laughs> um, but I have no formula for that. I'm just <laughs> putting them on how I think they look nice. Okay, and then I'm going to do a maroon bead, a white rondelle, and a gold. And sometimes these little pearls have paint in there, in their little holes. You just have to poke it through. Maroon bead, white rondelle, and the antique gold bead. Okay, crimp bead on either side. And just crimp it down. Okay, I'm going to do one more crimp bead on either side. One over here. Maybe. That one doesn't want to go on either. Wow, he didn't want to come off either. He didn't want to go on and he didn't want to come off. I may have got my chain kind of split a little doing those pearls on the last one. Okay, there's one. One on this side. And this will probably be the last segment I do because the rest of it will be kind of hidden. Um, you know, when you put it on, it, the rest of it's not going to show. So I'm going to come up Probably about this far. Put these side by side just to get it pretty much the same. Okay. And what do I want to finish it with? Let's see. I think a white one and the antique gold. So white on each side. And then the antique gold. Whoops. You know, you could use bead caps on here. You could do just about anything. I thought about some um, rhinestone rondelles, but I didn't, didn't get them out. I think these um, little rondelles give it enough sparkle that it's pretty. Y'all know I like
like sparkly things. Definitely do. I'm trying to get this side to take a crimp bead. There we go. One more there and one more over here. Okay. That one didn't go down. Go on. Hmm. Go on down there. He's being a little difficult. There we go. All right, crimp it down. Crimp it on this side. Okay. Now that's as far as I'm going to go with the beads. Now what I need to do is finish it. Wow, it, it's pretty. I, li I like it a lot. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take my clamshell connectors right here. I am going to put my chain through the bottom hole of my clamshell. I am going to put on a crimp. If I can get one on this side, I may have to pull out another one. I think I tried all these. None of them wanted to work. Try this one. There we go. He'll work. And then I don't go right to the edge because if you do, when you crimp, it's going to kind of just break it off because the link will break. But come down just a little and just crimp that just like you've been doing. Okay, we're going to do that on both sides. Same on this side, get the crimp bead on. Crimp it down. Okay, now since I've got the E6000 out, I don't always do this, but since I have it available right here, <laughs> I'm gonna take a little E6000. Well, I just got it all over my finger again. I'll have it all over me. I'm just gonna coat this right here. You don't have to do this at all, but I don't know. If I have it out and available, I do it, and then I'm just going to close that crimp up or that uh, clam up. And I just feel like that that really adds to the security. I have not had a problem with these coming apart um, before. I just I feel like the crimp holds it on perfectly well. Not ever had a problem with it, but um, if I have the E6000 out, I will add that on just just as an extra step. Can't hurt, right? And then close it up. All right, so there we have it. We have our two crimped ends. Now I'm going to take a larger jump ring. Let me find one here in my mass of jump rings. <laughs> I'm gonna take a larger one and I'm gonna put it through this end of the, or this side, through the little clamshell holes right there. I'm going to close it up. That's for our lobster to grasp onto, to clasp onto. And I'm going to take this little one and hook my lobster on, on the opening there. Just put it right through. Close it. Ow, just poked myself with that <laughs> toothpick. Goodness, I need to go get some lunch. <laughs> Getting hungry. Okay, making me not think straight. Okay, and here is our little uh, mended scallop necklace. I think these turn out super cute. Now, if you've got some E6000 on your jump ring, all you have to do is take it and just, it will come right off. See that? If your jump ring is kind of dull because you ended up, you got E6000 on it, which I do regularly. Or you can take your plier and kind of just, it'll come right off. Okay? But make sure this is good and dry before you try to manipulate it around or anything. Okay? Um, if you find that your E6000 is showing on the back, you can again take your lobster and just pull it off where you think it's showing when it dries. But it should dry pretty clear. But here it is. I think this turned out really cute. Um, it is a great way to use shells that are broken. Um, very easy, really. And some of these scallops are so, so beautiful that I just love. I mean, even if it's broken, we can mend it and make something beautiful out of it. 
So these are definitely my favorite shell that there is. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me put this on and I will show you how it hangs. I'll be right back. Okay, so here it is on. I think it's super pretty. I just think the scallops are so gorgeous. I think I'm gonna have to take the orange ones and make one out of them too. <laughs> but it's just got the floating beads, so the chain, pretty chain shows. And yeah, I really like this one. So um, if you're interested, I do have bags of seashells on my website. There aren't a lot of scallops in there, um, but there are a few and there are a lot of clam shells, which you could do this exact same thing with the clams. Um, so if you're interested, check that out and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.